I had it really mapped out, the whole thing. Um, what happens, the whole movie. I knew where it ended, I knew, knew all that. It was very easy for me because it's very autobiographical in a way. I just always, here's what's going to happen, here's how we're going to flow through the years. But um, it wasn't important. I mean, the, the time element of this, people ask, oh, did you have the whole script written? I said, well, no, why would you do that? Because it, it was important to use the time all these years to, to actually inform the process. You know, like, for instance, I always knew there was going to be a scene at the end when he says goodbye to his mom um, and goes off to college. But it wasn't, had we written that scene, had that scene been written at the very beginning, we would have been giving away the opportunity to use those 10, 11 years that my actors had to live through and think about it, the whole maturation process and what that means. And, you know, you got to use the real moments that that time allowed. You know, by the time we were actually shooting that, that was Patricia's last day of shooting. She's saying goodbye to the crew she's known for all these years. She's saying goodbye to her fictional son for the last time. That's the last thing they're doing together. So the way we could use the momentum, the, the last year before that, we got to thinking about it. You know, I could say, Patricia, you know, okay, next year, you're, you know, He's leaving, you're back in this apartment, you know, I could describe everything. And then spend a year really thinking about that, asking friends, like, because it was based on, I remember saying goodbye to my mom, she was sitting at a table alone, you know, smoking. I was like, she didn't say much. I go, okay, bye mom. She's like, okay, bye. Like, wow, she was acting a little weird. What's wrong with her? And then years later, when my own daughter went off to college, you know, it takes you a while, and you're so self-absorbed as a youngster. And then like, oh, as a parent, it's very different. But I got to ask, you know, Ethan, Patricia, like, hey, come up to college, what happened when you, you know, as I felt it needed more dialogue, you know, but I, I just remember for a year, that was one of my subjects, like parting with parents, you know, so I, I could kind of take informal polls and talk. So the way any writer works, you just grab things from anywhere. Ethan's mom had a line, um, I knew this day was coming, but I didn't expect it to be so fucking happy about it. That was, his mom said that. <laughs> Sutherland, my producer, her daughter had left for college literally a month before we, we shot that scene. And she told me, oh, thank you. she told me from the airport, she called her daughter, she was dropping her off at college in Oregon, called her from the airport and just said, just so you know, crying, you know. Just so you know, this is the worst day of my life. <laughs> Call your daughter back. I said, you really? You did that? She's off the cop? Yeah. I did. I was like, oh, yeah. It's all about mom. <laughs> you know, so I thought, oh, that's, that's, there's something true there. It reminded me. It's like, well, Patricia's character, Olivia, has earned that that emotional purge or that breakdown. It's like, and the film needs it, too. I sometimes have to be pushed to be a little more dramatic, but I was like, the film earned it. So... That's an example of something that, I mean, I knew the scene 12 years before, but the exact dialogue, we were still working out, you know, the night before, but after one year of, of focus. So the time element of this is something no writer has ever been given before in one movie to be able to write, shoot, edit, think. It's like a sculpture or something. It was, it was really cool, but I was always very conscious of using, using that time. And had you planned certain ideas, like that the uh, mother would have a multiple uh, uh, romances, marriages, and this would be a part of her life over the course of these years? Yeah, that both parents would kind of have separate lives, both of the biological parents, and you know they would be different, and you would have more knowledge of the mom if that's the primary you know caregiver. Um, you just see more of that. I remember my dad is like, I saw him mostly on weekends, but I was like, I didn't ever know who he was dating. I had a scene where he said, well, what about you? What about your life? Or you got a girlfriend? Like my dad kind of, you, you can hide that. Or the a mother who's they're there all the time would be harder to hide maybe who you're dating or, you know, so, and they're, and they're very different. So I always was conscious of the kid's point of view. Like you don't know everything. You just don't know much. You don't know why your parents got divorced. You know, I see some people project on this movie, well, he's a ne'er-do-well who went to Alaska. We don't know. The film doesn't tell you what went on between them. Because I want that to feel like 
when you're six or seven years old. I don't know why my parents got divorced. You know, I hear things, but I don't know. You know, it's like years later. So that the knowledge that's kept from a kid, you're often in the dark about some of the bigger things or why are we moving or what's going on. So parents explain as much as you need to know. But to me, the film charted that maturation kind of as it's a gaining of agency. You know, at first, he's just dragged through his life. You go, you're dominated by your older sibling and your parents taking you where they will. But you see, you know, him gaining like his own life. He emerges out of that and pretty soon. At some point, you know, he's got his own car. We're on the weekend with him. But they start to fade into the background. You know, the siblings, the you know, sibling goes off to college. We don't see her a lot less. Parents become less a big deal in your life. You know, you've got a job. You're, you know, so I just wanted to kind of capture that that feeling of like, okay, this is my life now. You know? So it slowly happens, and it's a it's a big mystery. But again, this this canvas allowed that kind of you know feeling, I guess. So let me ask a little bit more about the process in this. Um, did you start out? You you started your first year. So did you write that sequence in detail before, and then before you would shoot the next year, yeah. you would write that? Uh, but you didn't write it all, I'm sure, at the beginning. No, I had I had an outline. And Patricia and Ethan, they both say, well, the film that is, is, is the film you described. Like, Patricia remembers, you know, I called her up out of the blue and talk, started talking to her about the movie, you know, kind of asking if she'd be interested. Of course, Patricia, bless her, she just jumped on. I'd only met her once briefly and just liked her work and knew she had been a mom young in her life. And I just thought, you know, she might be great for this. And we started talking to one of our moms and she just jumped in. So, um, yeah, every year, that first year, it was written and then we would rewrite. A lot, I do a lot of workshopping rehearsals and it's not so much. It's not like Stanislavski acting exercises, as much as it is, you know, the ear, you know, for dialogue. We just run through scenes and what's working about the scene. Well, for me, it never ends in the process of, of writing. And you know, as a filmmaker, I'm just trying to make the scene be realistic and find humor. You know, a lot of humor kind of comes out of group. You know, your, your, your own mind never quits working. You know, even between takes, I might have a new little idea or an actor might say something. But we're never improvising. We're never like turn on the camera and say, okay, here's the situation, go. We did that like once when Eleanor was sitting around the campfire talking about the Star Wars game. Yeah. The game that could be the theoretical next movie. Um, and because he had talked a lot about that, and he and Ethan were both had something to say about that. And I had two cameras, and I said, well, I'm just going to use a little bit. So I knew what they were going to talk about. But I said, well, let's just, you know, we had time. I said, okay, let's just run through it and see what. So that, that was about as loose as it gets in my world. Other than that, it's a much more of a writerly process. And every year with IFC, I had to turn in an outline just to get the money for this year. I had to turn in something. <laughs> so that always like Kathleen would call, okay, well, Ethan's available, Patricia's available. You got that outline? And that would finally make me, after thinking maybe for eight months, taking notes and feeling my way, it's like, okay, time to sit down and put it on paper. And so we would turn that into IFC, we'd get a budget for that year, and then i just keep filling in the, the dialogues. But I'm always confident in that, you know, that doesn't, that's my least, I, when I write anything, I always have a big outline, I know the end, I know everything, and the dialogue to me comes last. It's like music and words, you know, the lyrics come to me last. Yep. Now so you've I'm said... Confident about it. You said this that the film is uh, very autobiographical, in the sense of are you the, the young character and it been through this? Um, was it autobiographical in the sense about your parents also, also about you as a parent? So yeah, it's both. When I say autobiographical, I use that very loosely because <laughs> yes, a lot of that happened to me, or a lot of it's memories. You know, like why am I still remembering staring at a dead bird? Why am I still remembering, you know, sitting in the car drinking with my friend Danny at graduation? Why is that more vivid to me than actually walking across the stage and getting my diploma, which is, you know, kind of boring. You know, <laughs> everyone does it. It's not, you know, these big moments end up not being the biggest moments of your life. So I was really, I wanted the whole film to feel like a memory. So 
it was kind of from memory, you know, things that left impressions. So, but yeah, it's very personal to all of us. And I think, um, yeah, it's a portrait of, of trying to be a dad or figuring out parenting, which is, I don't think anyone's prepared for it. You might have read books or think you know, but when, when you get there, you're kind of like, okay, how do you do this? And I, I wanted, I love that Ethan's character is very consciously trying to be a dad and he's come back into these kids' lives and he's trying so hard. So I just thought that's kind of funny too. Yeah. Um, well, he, it, it's interesting just the transformation that, 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 yes, that Ethan's character goes through mm -hmm. in the course of the movie. I mean, how much of that it had we, been thought through in advance? Ethan and I, we started there, but conceptually, we had known each other a while, and we realized our dads kind of did the same thing. They both worked at insurance companies, and they, you know, kind of managerial. His dad was a, um, my dad was a, his dad's an actuary, he's like a CPA, you know. But in the insurance, we, oh, he's got to go from cool dad, you know, the GTO to, He's going to have a job at an insurance agency. I think he's going to be in the insurance office. And so we, we got there, you know, little bit by bit, life happens. But to me, that's not a failure. It's kind of a beautiful portrait of a guy who kind of grows up himself, right? Matures and makes life decisions, and it's not so bad. He still has a lot of passion. He loves his kids. I think he's a good dad. And, uh, you know, he's just made a decision to be above ground, to be like a real, you know, so you can look at that as a compromise, but yeah. so we have mixed, you know, I mean, it is sad to lose a GT, you know, <laughs> minivan's right, you know, there's a reason you have a little kid, you want a minivan, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great line. So, I mean, you have, of course, you have two um, uh, leading actors who Ethan, you've worked with a number of times before, so you kind of had confidence that they would be there over the course of 12 years, but you hired a kid who yeah. you did not know where he would be 12 years hence, and if he would want to continue with it, how he would turn out. What led you to take that leap of faith? Yeah, yes. that was just, it was necessary. Yeah, Patricia and Ethan, you're right, they made a professional commitment that even though no one's under contract, because you can't contract anyone for more than seven years, <laughs> we, we found out. So, it was like, okay, this is a leap of faith. We're all here for each other. And, uh, but yeah, the kid, I mean, by far, I mean, my daughter was easy. She sort of cast herself. When she realized there was a part for an older sister in the age range, she's like, well, okay, that's the part I'm playing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, she had been in other movies, grew up on movie sets. Very easy for us to work together. And kind of a relief for me because on a technical level, I just kind of knew where she would be every year, because that sounds funny, but I had a real concern if the kid moved, because I knew this would be intimate, I needed to go have lunch with him, I needed to talk to him, I, we were going to be in each other's lives, and if he moved to another state, that would get tougher to do, so I remember there was one, when I met Eller, I met a ton of kids, but one plus in his column was that his parents had pretty deep ties, he had grandparents in town, you know, I think grandparents had land, a house, you know, they were pretty, I thought they were pretty locally rooted, but that was just one little bonus. The real thing was he was just a really uh, thoughtful, wonderful, unique kid. You know, a lot of kid actors are kind of cute, you know, they're trying to, they're really precociously smart. And what he was is kind of a storyteller. He could talk about movies and music and his, his taste was far way ahead of the six-year-old I met, by the time we were shooting, he was seven, but in his favorite music, he had the taste of probably like a cool, you know, 14 or 15-year-old, 16-year-old, I mean, you know, <laughs> holes in his pants, you know, he was just a cool kid, but we had to kind of make him more dorky, you know, for the movie, I wanted him to start somewhere, and by the end, I think that's closer to who he really is. I always say, at the very beginning, that's not really him, the end, the guy sitting up on the, the mountain at college, and that's kind of him. That's kind of him to some, to some degree. So I always knew the film would go that way. But I mean, come on, a huge casting decision. You know, when you casting is a fraught enough thing. Anyway, you're like, okay, you, are you right for this part for the next, you know, two months? Right. But to look at a kid, especially, and go, who are you going to be? You know, 
who are you going to grow up to be? Are you going to be cool? Are you going to be, you know, <laughs> you know so it's a, it was a big leap. But I just, you know, had an instinct about it. It was just, I, I, to be honest, it was like two sides of myself. Like the jock kid or the arty kid. Because I felt I was kind of both. And I chose the arty kid. Because I, I felt that's like the better. Famous, I think my favorite film that had to do that was probably um, My Son John, Robert Walker's last film, yeah. you know, Strangers on a Train. He died during production of a great film, a Leo McCary film. That's a brilliant film. But he had to piece together footage from yeah, 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 Hitchcock yeah. gave him some, yeah. a voice, and you know, they piece it together. It's a flaw at the end of the movie, but what a tough thing to. So I, I, there was no plan. <laughs> what was that happening? It'd be like, oh, almost got there. Or, I remember as we got closer to the end, I, I was so invested in this, and you could, I knew how much I loved this, or thought it was, you know, the film I wanted it to be. When I think we were down to the last couple of years, I even had the outlines. I said, okay, Ethan, if something happens to me, you got to finish all these lines. You could do it. And so I kind of was like, take care of it. I was joking, but. Good. <laughs>